I'm almost tempted to trade in my cowboy hat and boots for a football helmet and a pair of cleats as EWTN Live takes the field tonight with Crossing the Gold Team. So please stay with us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Father Mitch Pelqua, and welcome to EWTN Live, our chance to bring you guests from all over the world. And our guests came from wandering all over the place, but we'll talk to them in a minute. I just want to mention that today is the Feast of the Archangels, Michael, who is the leader of the army of the Lord of Hosts, and then Raphael, whose name means the healing of God, and Gabriel, who meet, which, whose name means the warrior of God, but who is the great communicator and the patron saint of the media. And we really need to grow and develop in our devotion to these angels because we are involved in a spiritual war and we need their help against the bad archangels and the other evil spirits. So let's use this as a great opportunity to develop our own devotion to the angels. We need them much. Now, our guests tonight, in fact, have something in common with the archangels. They've been dealing with, uh, on their program, the spiritual warfare and the battle that goes on between humans and, and, and God and the angels and the bad angels. It's a spiritual war that we have to take part in. And they're about to make sure that they win. Now, they host a very popular show, one of my own favorites, Crossing the Goal. And the team uh, has been here finishing a brand new series on spiritual combat that will begin airing later next month. So please welcome Brian Patrick, Peter Herbeck, Curtis Martin, and Daddy Abramowitz. Thank you, Father. Good to see you. Gentlemen. Hey, Father. Thank you, Father. It is great to have you back. And, of course, Brian, you're also the host of uh, EWTN's uh, Sunrise, Mornings, Morning Morning Sunrise Morning Show. Sunrise Morning Show. Yes. Heard all over the country now. It's such a blessing. Cool. Really. But it's early in the morning. <laughs> yes, it is. So we've been up a long time. Yes, it is. Because uh, you had to do the show today plus do the taping. That's right. I'll be on the air this, uh, in the morning from here as well. Yep. Now, tell us a little bit about this new series. What are you up to with this? Well, what we did is spiritual combat. And you were, you were reading a verse before we got in here. Is Ephesians six ten. It starts there and goes through uh, several more vo verses. We start off about the war. What's, we're all involved with the war out there. Then we break it down, the world, the flesh, and the devil, and then we take it from there. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, I'll tell you what, our guys will tell you, we really prayed up. We, we pray a lot, but this one we really prayed up because we knew we'd be dealing with the devil, that he would try to attack. But if you stay prayed up, and that's what we did, and uh, I think those people are going to find that the series was very effective. Absolutely. And you know, what we're trying to do, Father, is w w the program is designed to reach men. Anybody's welcome to watch, but we're going after the male audience. And our belief is that a lot of men are sitting on the sidelines and that God has called them, he's made them, he's created them to get actively involved in the game. The Second Vatican Council has reminded us it's a universal call to holiness. A lot of guys are not quite sure how to get in off the sidelines and into the game. And so time and time again, we're going after that theme. And this one was, guys, you were made for battle. As when you were little boys, you played war in the backyard. You were meant to play real war as grown men. Let's do that and fight for God. We talked first about uh, the world of flesh of the devil, as Danny was saying. What are we up against? And then the last three or four shows, we talked about how we've been equipped to win that battle. So right there in that Ephesians passage that you were pointing to, put on the armor of God, right? The helmet of salvation, the shield of faith. We went through each one of those steps to be able to help guys get equipped to be able to fight the battle. I've done the secular news for a long time before joining the Crossing the Gold team and the Sunrise Morning Show produced in Cincinnati at Sacred Heart Radio and covered the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. And we've talked about, you know, Vietnam and Korea. None of those wars, even the world wars, none of them compare to the spiritual war that we're fighting. And we're made to fight, as these guys said. We like to fight, too. 
Yep. We might just need to be sure we're fighting the right power. Yep. And we've got Jesus on our side, so the devil can't mess with us, but he's going to keep trying. And the stakes are really high. We're talking yeah, about high. eternal souls. There's a battle for eternal souls going on between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. And unfortunately, many men, many Catholic men, many baptized Catholic men are asleep at the wheel. They don't even know there's a fight going on. And if you don't know there's a fight going on, you're losing. You know, you know? I think that that's one of the problems, yeah. is that a lot of people yeah. look at the spiritual world as if it's all very, very nice, mm -hmm. yeah. and that there's no battle at all. Right. That a lot of people will look, as, you know, I think back on so many of the people I came across in the New Age movement. They just assume that everything is good, yeah. and that and not even neutral, but good, and therefore there is no discernment as to what is bad and what is good, right. and that we're in a struggle. And that's what a lot of people just don't realize. Mm -hmm. They make the spiritual life too nice yeah. and not deal with the fact of the battle that we have at hand. They it's a it battle like, we can win, though. Right. It may, they make it like it's some kind of a game. You know, the Saints played in the Super Bowl last year and beat the Coast Ghost Saints. They beat <laughs> wait, the, no, wait a minute. What Saints are you talking New about? New Orleans Saints, man. Oh, New Orleans Saints. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they beat the Colts. But the Colts get a chance to come back again in the spiritual battle you only have one chance. And in the end, you're going to go to one or two places, heaven or hell. And we make the choice. Don't blame it on God. There's no second the, season. There's no second season. There's no That's second right. chance. And another thing, a lot of people don't believe there is a devil. I mean, just look at Scripture. And what, what did uh, St. Michael, the archangel, what did he do? He knocked the devil uh, down to the earth. I mean, so this isn't some kind of a game. You know, we like to joke around our, our team, but when we come to these kind of things, we're, we're not joking around. This is serious business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where the, the, the spiritual battle, like you say, is something that we're not in this alone, but St. Michael and his angels and all the other uh, heavenly hosts yes. are involved in it as well. Right. Well, if you don't call on them, you're in trouble. The Holy Spirit, uh, we better call on Mary, uh, and, uh, Blessed Virgin Mary. You've got to call on all of us, storm the heavens. And uh, it's not like it's a one battle and it's over with. It's every, skirmishes yeah, every, it's every day. day. When you wake up in the morning, you know it's not if he's going to be involved with us with temptations, whatever. It's when and how many times. Okay, so. you remember a time, Father, when in our country there was more of just an out out you know, a total denial of the spiritual realm, you know, all the new atheists and everybody, you know, to believe that there's a spiritual realm, you got to be a kook, especially to believe in the devil, you got to be off your rocker. You know, it's a fantasy, it's a myth, it's all made up. We're all smart enough to know that that's not the case now. That's what the devil loves. The devil loves one extreme or the other, you yes. know, either deny that he even exists or find one, find a demon around every corner so people think you're nuts and they don't take him seriously. Mm -hmm. But nobody spoke more clearly and more often or confronted demons more than Jesus did. He did. Right? Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, the only other period I can think of that would be close would be the 1920s. And in the 1920s, you had a, a real materialism mm -hmm. as prosperity came across the country and people ignored a lot of the spiritual realities. And then the during depression. the Great Crash and the Depression, yeah. then they began to find spirituality, but they did so the hard way. Mm -hmm. And we know that we can't do this alone, Father, and we have to call on the saints and the angels and Mary, but we also need each other. You know, we're, we're a band of brothers here on Cross and the Goal. We need each other. We need to march together. Uh, nobody goes into battle alone and wins. In fact, we couldn't make a difference if we were just by ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But because of the victory that Christ has won for us, because of the grace that he's imparted to the church, we can make a difference. What a tragedy if now that we could make a difference, we you opted know. not to make a difference. Yes. And that's where many, many people today, many practicing Catholics, particularly Catholic men, are on the sidelines, and they've been kind of led to believe that religion is you know, pretty much a, the work of the women, and yeah. thank God for the godly women in the world. But I haven't found a woman I've met yet who thinks there's enough godly men. We need more godly men, and we really believe that it's the role of men throughout history to be the agents to build culture. And our culture is not in need of renewal. It's in need of a complete rebuilding. It's in ruins today. And men need to step up. They need to harness the grace of Jesus Christ through the Catholic Church, through the sacraments, and step up and go to whatever dark corner of the world, whether it's abortion or pornography, whether it's the breakdown of marriage, whether uh, it's starvation in the, in the second, third world, or even here in the first world, whatever that dark corner is, go and bring the light of Christ. And he's a great deceiver. He's a liar. He's a thief. He's a murderer. And we have to understand what is his goal and what is his objective. His goal and objective is to the salvation of our souls, to damnation. Not salvation, damnation, and our children. If we understand it, that, that, that's what he, he's after. 
Who won the Super Bowl, Danny, last year? The Saints. The Saints. What's the answer? To become Saints. The Saints are the winners. Yeah. The Saints are those who take the call to holiness seriously. And this is what we're trying to do with our own lives. We're trying to do with this show in a small way. It's to say, let's all take the call to holiness seriously. That's how you defeat the devil. Is you just live the Catholic life. You live the Christian life the way we're called to live it, radically seeking first the kingdom of God, and then the Lord will win the victory for you. Victory belongs to the Lord. It's one of the things we were saying so, so often in the program. Live in Him. The victory is His. But too many of us aren't living in Him the way we ought to. Well, one of the things that I also, something that you mentioned, Curtis, is that there are a variety of battlegrounds. Yes. Not everybody's going to be called to every battleground. But as you mentioned, pornography is one. You got abortion is another. We just had the, pre the, the present administration using the courts in a very tyrannical way to undo Congress's prohibition of uh, embryonic uh, stem cell research. And that they're un undercutting when the people win a victory. They're trying to undercut it. This is a battle. We've, we've got to deal with family. We've got the atheists. Uh, we've got people who want to change the economic system to a socialist system. All of these things are going on at once. And we have to choose, Lord, what battle do you want me to be right. in? You can't find an area in our culture that right. isn't in deep crisis. And what I always like to say, because we work with a lot of young people who are trying to figure out you know, how do I do this? And so through Focus on the college campuses, we're looking, and trying to encourage... Explain what Focus is. Focus, the Fellowship of Catholic University students. We've got uh, 250 full-time missionaries now serving on over 50 campuses, reaching thousands of college students. Really exciting work that's going on. And we're working on the front lines trying to raise up the next generation of leaders. And they're asking, where do we go? And my point is, you can go wherever you want, but I think if you went to God and asked Him where you should go, He'll probably tell you one of three areas. Go into your own life and look into your own heart and say, Are there, is there something that makes me very angry or very sad, I'm brokenhearted about it, or brings me great joy? And that will tell you. If you're, maybe your family was ripped apart by divorce, go dedicate the rest of your life to strengthening marriages. Maybe you've been through the tragedy of abortion. Go spend the rest of your life protecting the unborn. Whatever it is that God has allowed to touch your life, that might be where you should start. And if He wants to move you someplace else, great. But every man that we're trying to reach through our program here across the goal, just go somewhere. God can steer a moving car, but He can't steer a parked car. You know, another thing that happens, we mentioned it earlier, the, that... Uh, a lot of guys uh, think it's you're weak or it's for women. If it's so weak and wimp, jump into the Christian life and see how weak and wimpy it is. You know, we don't stand up. The, one of the biggest things I see out here is indifference. I don't care one way or the other, which is the worst. You, you know what the Lord says about that. I'll spew you out of my mouth. Get in the battle. There's a battle going on out here. If you want some, get your guts. Our church needs to be defended. You know, we're easy to knock the church and complain. Look at all the good things they're doing. Look at all the things the priests are doing in, in the church. Does it have some flaws? Yes, it has flaws, but it has way more benefits than it has flaws. But jump into the battle. We're not into the battle. We're like uh, oblivious to what's going on out here. And one of the things that can go on is that if a person is not looking at himself and taking a look at, you know, the way the battle is also something interior to right. me. Absolutely. Right. Then... You can That's project it, it onto the other outside of you yeah. and miss a, miss the bullet for your own self. You got to so change yourself. To, exactly. exactly. So yeah. both of these areas of working in the culture and working inside the soul uh, have to go. One on of the things at the we said. Time. One of the things we said on the pro with the spiritual combat thing. You think the. The unholy trinity is the world, you said, the flesh, which is that dimension of reality out there that's resisting the will of God. It's external to us. The flesh is like the Trojan horse within us that, that sort of cooperates, connives with the world's resistance to God. So that's that internal battle that you're talking about. And the devil, so the world, the flesh, and the devil. Jesus won victory over all of those. And Paul tells us in that great passage in Ephesians, stand, take a stand in where Christ has, he's placed you now in a new situation. He's freed you from from those powers. Now stand in that freedom and live it and put on the armor of God and start to, you know, break the hold of that in, in, in other people's lives and those around you to bring the kingdom of God. The first step if you want to be a man of God is to confront the biggest problem you can see. And the biggest problem I can see is right here. Yeah. It is inside of me. And it's also the problem, coincidentally, that I have the most ability to address. And it's true for every man. And to step up and say yes. And every man and woman. But we're, again, going after men because we believe they're the ones that are asleep at the wheel. And saying, wake up, guys. It's time to get going. And this and mission of forming godly men goes beyond the show. Crossing the Goal is now a ministry 
uh, Coach Danny mm -hmm. is really involved in putting together a lot of resources, conferences, and it's really reaching men across the country. What we try to do is, we have the show. You can hit a lot of people that way, a lot of men. You know, we trick and we got our set looks like a sports center show. So that when they're clicking, they stop. What is this? They find out, hey, wait a minute, this is a spiritual show, but we talk about issues that guys are dealing with. So we decided, hey, let's take this thing on the road. So we've done over the last year and a half, probably five or six conferences all over the country and attracted thousands of men there to get them in a, talking about conversion, transformation, and evangelization. And then we try to get them to go into, back to their parishes, which our church is set up beautifully and have parishes, to start small men's groups and, and, and get involved. But, but what we do, we use the DVDs. Take, for instance, this, the DVD, and then to go with it, a, a playbook that we have that goes in conjunction with the, the DVD. So they meet in the parishes and they show some of the DVD and then they go into the playbook and it asks questions and it, it, it makes, makes it where guys can talk about it. That was our first one to come out, so we had such success with it. We came and now this is on the Our Father. And then we did a playbook, which this one, you know, we, we improved. It's more user friendly. It That's has great. questions, and it's it it really has brought uh, guys to start groups in their parishes and things. So, Danny, those are on those DVDs. We have what eight programs? Yeah, like we say, try we'll have to a do series of Lord's Prayer. Yeah. They were half hour long. Half hour long. But and how do men's groups use them then? How do how do how do you? Well, we get them, you know, they, they can start in their parish with 10 guys, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever they want to do, and then they meet whatever once a week, and then they use the DVD and plug it in and watch part of it, then they break into other groups and they discuss it. Yeah. Then they watch some more and discuss it. The show is broken down in four parts. We've, we've got right. the kickoff, the game plan, the red zone, and the end zone, and so the book reflects that as well. Right. Why are small groups so important to your vision? Well, one of the things, like Father says, you're in the battle out here. If you're in the battle by yourself, so they don't send soldiers out by themselves. They're going to get killed. Right. If we go out there in the spiritual war, we're going to get killed yeah. spiritually. So what we all try to do, we're all involved, and I've been involved with this men's group for 25 years. I need to be surrounded by godly men godly brothers that hang together, accountability. Danny, what are you doing with your life? What are yeah. you doing, brother? You, you seem yeah. like, uh, I know you've been drinking a lot here lately or whatever. Yeah. And, and when you go back to these meetings, part of this thing, when we leave, if you watch our shows all the time, when we leave the show, we just don't say, see you guys next week. No, we leave them, all of us leave them with something. What are you going to do next week? Tell us, are you going to open your prayer life up more? Are you going to get into a small group? What are you going to do? Action plan. Don't talk a good game. Show me. The, uh, the, the small groups are so important because that's where you have to be accountable and open up your life. One of right. the ways the devil does win a victory over a lot of men is that we have a lot going on in secret. That's right. We're, in living double, we're living double lives. We're living in the dark. And it's in that accountability group where guys go and say, well, how are you using your time? Are you, do, are you praying? Are you going to mass? Are you going to confession? What are you doing with your mind? You know, what's happening with your finances? What's happening with your sexual life and your relationship? How are you handling yourself? And when we're alone and we're hiding in the dark, the devil can grind us into the ground with shame and condemnation and that whole downward spiral. And all we need to do is shed light on it. Bring it out into the light. The devil hates the light. He runs. He takes off. And so if you, if you can have that kind of an environment that's safe, that's secure, where guys are being honest and say, you can count on me. I'm not going to tell anybody what you're telling us. Right. They need to go to confession, but they also need brothers. The scripture says a threefold cord is not easily broken. We need to lock arms together and say, we're in this together. And I'm going to stand with you when you fall. I'm going to be there to help pick you up because I want you to help pick me up if I fall down. And what's said here stays here. You know, yep. it's not, when you start not sharing. Not here. Yeah. Not here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just too late. Here. It's too late now, man. <laughs> it's too late. It's out there. But you know. Guess what? Because the worst thing that you could do is go out there and say, hey, did you hear what Danny did? You know, right. that, exactly. that, that blows know. the whole thing. No, the, it's, the, the, it's got to be trust. This, this is not like, you know, political news where everybody's trying no, to no. tell every, everything on everybody else. This is right, absolutely. a respect Very personal. of the individual. Yeah. And we recognize our own sinfulness, and that's why we can relate to each other. We recognize our own faults. And we also know that Jesus, the grace of God, gives us the power to overcome those faults and absolutely. to grow. And, there's and, no, and we know there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And we need to remind one another of these fundamental truths, you know, and the only way to do it is to be together, yeah. is to share that faith, you know? Great. That's great. Well, um, in terms of some of the things going on for the next step, 
What, what, what do you see as the, the next step of what's, what you're going to be doing with this series? Well, the next uh, one we're th thinking about is, is what should we stand up for? That's what we prayed on this and things like family, marriage, country, you know, these, these types of things. We're thinking, praying on That's probably what we're going to do and, and uh, might start bringing in uh, a guest or two. We used uh, our wives and we'll talk about that when they come on the show here yeah. in a minute. But we would talk about finances and bring maybe a guest in and talk about because a lot of people don't have a budget in their house and really in trouble, especially the way the economy is now. So, exactly. yeah, yeah, we're very right. excited about the two we just completed yeah. the episode on spiritual warfare and also a, a, a mini special on marriage and family. Did four part series on that as well, and those will air just a, little, a, a few weeks. Okay. Another exciting thing that's spun out of this is we, as Danny mentioned, we're doing conferences, crossing the goal conferences now around the country more and more. And then, Danny, why don't you explain a little bit more, not only conferences, right. but what are we doing as follow-up? Well, you know, that? a conference by itself, just like if you go to a conference or a retreat, and then you do nothing afterwards, you'll probably revert back to the same way you were before. Right. So we're, we're encouraging guys to, when you finish the conference in these towns, take for instance in Jacksonville, we had a conference. But oh, first of all, tell us, up. what did you do before you do the follow-up? What did you do in the conference itself? Yeah, well, we talked good. about, remember I mentioned, uh, we talked, uh, 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 Peter talked about uh, conversion. Mm -hmm. I yeah. talked about transformation. And uh, Curtis talked about evangelization. Then uh, Brian leads a question, Q&A, and allow, allow them fire away in questions. One thing I think why people really enjoy our show, we answer all the questions. We're not afraid of anything. We just, we're transparent. We're trying to help people. It's not about us. It's about trying to save souls. So we do that. But we also tell them that during the conference, let's get these guys signed up. Let's get into small groups. And then also we come back about three or four months after we do the conference with a retreat, a day and a half. And it's on how to utilize the Holy Spirit in our life in a deeper way. We don't we don't call on the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit in baptism, confirmation, but it's like some bird out there. We, we don't use it. It's, it dwells within us. Use it. Utilize it. Yeah, I sometimes think of, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit is portrayed as a dove yes. in the Gospels. But a lot of people would try to keep the dove in a little cave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you don't let, like a you don't let the Holy something. Spirit yeah. out and, and do anything. Yeah, it could be more like an eagle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, shape, you know, we shape the day to make it, uh, it's a little more than a half a day. It's not a full about day. A day and a half, we go yeah. from about 8.30 in the morning till about 2.30 in the afternoon or something and right around there. And the conference, yeah. Yeah, the conferences, yeah. yeah. And, and we do the conversion communion mission, but we also have confession every time. Yes. And we have mass every time. Right. And then uh, along and with Eucharistic the adoration. And Eucharistic and adoration. And Eucharistic adoration. 80% of the guys are going to confession after 25, 30, 40 years of having been back to confession. That's awesome. We purposely made it shorter because guys don't want to shoot their whole Saturday. Yeah. They can come and have a fantastic day for about five, six hours, and they can still get home, get some chores in, or watch Alabama lose to LSU. Or I mean, no, 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 but that's, you know, that's one of the great things. You, you pay attention to the way guys actually are. Oh, that's what we sure. do. And, and, you know, guys have a variety of different goals yeah. that they want to get done. Yeah. And so you, you adapt to the way men are, and you address the men. We're we guys, guys. We get it. We get it. We know exactly. ourselves. We've been there and done that. Yeah. Have yeah. We, we, you know, we've done exactly. it. Yeah. Well, no, I, I need to take a break, but we're going to come back because we also want to talk to the wives. Exactly. Uh, it's enough of you guys. Let's yeah. talk to the ladies That's and we'll right. find out right. what's really going on. Bottom exactly. line there, yeah. So please stay with us. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Yeah.
you. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, we have a wonderful audience here. It's a nice big group of folks that have come all the way from Kentucky, as well as a few folks, including one lady who's come from Quebec. Now, coming from Quebec, Canada is, is one thing, but she's walked here. <laughs> wow. She must really she, like your show. Uh, <laughs> she's, uh, she's, actually, this lady's making a pilgrimage uh, mm -hmm. all the way from Quebec to Guadalupe. Uh, wow. She's doing it on foot, so congratulations. Yeah. Now, if this lady can walk from Quebec, you can come here by car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to have you come and join us uh, here at the EWTN. This lady's making a pilgrimage for life. You can make a pilgrimage for your spiritual life. And this pilgrimage uh, uh, it will be helped if you contact our pilgrimage department. They'll give you all kinds of information about where you can stay, uh, the scheduling for masses, for the programs, tours of the network, and go, getting out to Hansville and all. And their phone number is 205-271-2966. That's 205-271-2966. Or go to our website, www.ewtn.com, and they'll be able to help you with all that information. All right, now we have another level of this program. Usually we just go right to question and answer, but um, I'm going to put you guys on the spot. First of all, I'd like you to introduce your wives. Would you begin, Peter? This is my bride, my joy, Debbie Herbeck. And Debbie's the mother of our four lovely children, and we are in our 25th year together in marriage. That's a fair start. Yes. Yeah. That's a great start. Yeah. <laughs> This is my wife, Michael Ann, my best friend uh, and soulmate and life uh, partner in all that we're doing. Uh, we're in the midst of raising eight wonderful children who are uh, Talk uh, about a good start. That's yeah. a pretty good start. We, we're, just, we're, we're, we're just so close to a football team, it's not even funny. But no, yeah. we're, uh, we're, and they're a great blessing to mm -hmm. us and the joy of our life. Uh, great, great. Well, welcome, ladies. Good Thank to have you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, what are you doing hanging out with these guys? Good question. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we wanted to see what they were up to down here, and when um, they talked about doing something on family, we thought it was only fair that, and marriage, that the wives were able to weigh in on that. Okay. <laughs> and what did you want to add? I think we wanted to really say some things from the wives' perspective that we thought would be helpful for not just the men who watch the show, but also the women who watch the show, because. Um, it really is a partnership, and so we wanted to add that piece that and represent it um, in a way that maybe the men wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. What are some of the things that you wanted to make sure got said? Oh, golly, Father, there's so many things that we were able to share. We just really spoke from our heart, sharing really some of the struggles of family life, but also really accentuate the joys, the blessings that God gives us in the hardships that our culture sees as a downer have become some of the greatest joys that we've been able to experience in our marriage. And just to be able to articulate that, it was a real great blessing. We did it. We did a four-part series with them, and, and uh, the first one was on just marriage itself. The first quarter. The first, we called it the first quarter. The second quarter was then on, uh, what do we call that? Kids. Kids. We're kids. Now, how the marriage that. relationship changes when you start having children. Mm -hmm. and you lose your sleep for one thing. Yeah, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's for sure. And then the third, one, the third quarter was on staying in the game, right? Mm -hmm. And then the fourth quarter was on once the children are gone and your grandparents and what happened. So Danny was able to share a whole lot about that. He's the grandpa on our team, and so he's able to share. And Brian as well. They both are and have raised their kids. So it was just a great, great time together. And it's a blessing to have Debbie and Mike Land with us because it gives Peter and I instant credibility. People look at yeah. I don't know what these guys know. Then they look at our wives and like, they must know something. Yeah. Because yeah. they married up. <laughs> That's right. It was a joy to be able to share some of the insights that we've just accumulated. Nothing, we're not wise on our own. We're all in the battle, in the struggle together. But to be able to be vulnerable and humble and just share some of the pearls that we've picked up along the way. Now, um, uh, are you guys ready to get some calls and questions? Sure, uh, sure. Right. No, <laughs> yeah, let's let's do that. I, I've got a caller first. Uh, Ann is on the line. Hello, Ann. Hey, all right, Father Mitch. First. Yeah, first of all, where are you from, Ann? I'm from Athorne, Massachusetts. Great, and what's your question? And I'm an 82-year-old woman. I'm from the old school. 
The first thing I want to do is I want to commend you. When God made you, he threw them all the way. Yeah, that's well, right. Thank you. Thank Danny, you. That's very kind. I agree with you wholeheartedly that men have to stop feeling like sissies and be like men. Amen. They have to be the head of the family. They have to be an example. And if you keep up what you're doing, you're going to make a lot of things. And Peter, I get one little suggestion for you to uh, pass on to the men. And I know it's going to sound kind of, they must wear the pants and not the panties. We'll do that. We'll do our best. And also, we might nuance it a little bit, but we'll that, make the uh, point. Uh, the ball, the, the games. Yep. Have them involved in, in, in classes and be the men. The women want their men to be men. They don't want to carry the load. That's true. Thank you. It's great encouragement. And thank you so much. Uh, one of the things I like about Massachusetts, they don't beat around the bush. Get yeah, right yeah, to the yeah, point. Yeah. I think she's got a helmet on. She's got it all strapped <laughs> on. She's ready to go. Yeah. Exactly. Let's take a comment from our studio audience. Ma'am, where are you from? Hi, my name's Marisa. I'm from Wisconsin. Great. Welcome here. Thank and you. What's, what's your question? Well, I really didn't have a question. I just wanted to give commendation to the, the panel up there tonight because I was in Pentecostal for many years, came back to the Catholic faith, and they had these men conventions and the men would come back fired up. And um, I've been married 15 years to an awesome guy named Robert, <laughs> and I won't say her last name because he's hiding in the audience and on purpose. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to say that um, I kind of feel like I'm alone and learning all of this on my own. And um, I think it's great to have examples, married examples. Um, we have wonderful priestly examples such as yourself and a friend of ours here in Alabama, Talladega Diocese. But it's wonderful to see lay people be examples. And I've seen enough of that in the Pentecostal movement, and it's wonderful. I kept wanting to say hallelujah and amen from the seat, you know, <laughs> like back in the day. But I just think it's wonderful to be able to edify one another mm -hmm. and to love one another and just to be a team with one another like you're trying to do with your ministry here so, so i just much. wanted to say thank, thank you, you. So thank you so thank much you. i appreciate that out. that was great and it's you so guys... awesome to have you back in the church thank you for yeah. coming back yes. and bring that yeah. fire with you <laughs> in, some, in some ways father we feel like we're we're kind of riding the wake of the recent popes who have tried very hard to help us understand that to be catholic means to live in mission to be a disciple to be engaged fully in the mission there's no room for passivity in the Catholic Church. We're all engaged by virtue of our baptism and confirmation, called to get into the game to the level the Lord has anointed us to do that. Now, ladies, the, we've had two ladies telling us guys to be, you know, more masculine. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any comments on any of that? Well, I think it's key. I have four children, and two of them are boys, two of them are sons, and they're very masculine, and, you know, obviously their dad has been a huge role model for them, but women want to follow men. Mm -hmm. They want to follow masculine men, and I think it's, you know, the whole series on marriage is so important because we want to, we're not doing it perfectly, but we want to say to people, it's really possible. You can really live this out, and we have to put our lives under the Lordship of Jesus, and that's where it begins with the men, is to be able to put their lives under the Lordship of Jesus and really follow Him, and that's very attractive. It's very attractive. Um, single guys, if you, want a, if you want a great wife, be a man. It's very mm -hmm. attractive for women to have a man who really is a man. I would say we have seven sons and so really only raising one daughter? And one daughter. Oh, one daughter. Oh my wow. The princess, the rose amongst the thorns. <laughs> That's right. And it is so important to raise up godly men. And, and in this culture, it is, it is a battle. And I will say that um, embracing the grace of our sacrament is... Uh, a wonderful gift and oftentimes couples don't realize to call upon that sacramental grace to help you get through the struggle but also to uh, pray for your children to that they can be strong in the battle and one thing that I think we have learned is uh, really to respect men I think oftentimes women get uh, to, be, to have a critical spirit and we're so quick to judge or to criticize that our, our men are emasculated, they're shamed. And so there's this fear to, to be the man, to be bold, to live for Christ because women have done such a good job at emasculating them and shaming them. 
And I really believe even raising our sons by women really honoring men, finding those things that are respectable and, and elevating them, it empowers them to embrace their masculinity, that godly masculinity in a way that they want to lead, they, they, want, to, they want to fight the battle, they want, they want to be the hero. And I think so it, it really, it lies in, in the women's hands because we, we, we play a big role in our men becoming the men of God that, that he created them to be. Oh, you know, thank you. you know, Michael Ann and I have spent a fair amount of time looking at Ephesians 5, the very controversial verse from, or passage from St. Paul about marriage. And men are called to unconditionally love their wives. Why? Because men tend to check out and get distracted with their business or whatever. Remember to love and have your heart at home. Women in the same verse are called to unconditionally respect their husbands. Why? Because men don't always work to earn that respect. And when women lose that, men check out. Yep. We have another call. We have Helen on the line. Hello, Helen. Yes, hello, Father Mitch. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Wisconsin. Great. All and right. what's your question? Um, well, I don't have really a question. I just have a comment that so, I, I enjoy the Crossing the Goal program, and I just love the way they, they do the program, how it's not just a one-on-one -on -one, um, talk, but, I mean, they, they all get involved, and they go f from different places, and, and it's, it's just a neat thing. And, and I hope that their next series about the... The angels, the warfare. I'm. I believe that's going to be go across very good. That's so cool. I, I will pr pray that more men watch your show. Amen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> and Helen, if you get a chance, try to talk to some of the men in your parish. Let them know that it's on. A lot of times, people in the parishes don't even know what's on EWTN. So if you can help to let the the other folks know, that would be a great gift to us. All right, we have, let's uh, take a question for our studio. Oh, do you have any comments on I was just going to say we purposely, Father, set up the program for it to move pretty quickly. You know, for me, it's got a lot of parts to it. You know, each section moves pretty quickly. And in this new series we did with, with our wives, there's a part of it called the game plan that Curtis and I usually do. It's like a teaching portion of the show. And our wives did a fantastic job in the game plan. So mm -hmm. tune in when that series comes up on marriage. Okay. They did an cool. excellent job. Cool. We have another question from our studio audience. Sir, where are you from? Uh, my name is Neil Sullivan from the uh, great state of New Jersey. And right. uh, not, not Kentucky in the audience here. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just uh, uh, the, the battle that you're referring to is the, uh, the battle against the, uh, the culture of darkness. Uh, if you haven't been in this battle and you, as you said, indifferent, how do you get started? And uh, also, uh, what, what kind of basic training would you need to fight that war? That's a great question. Oh, excellent questions. I, I would say two, two things. First of all, I think it's part of the history of young boys to learn how to go out into nature and start a fire. How do you get started? I don't know, just rub sticks together. I think we have to have that same kind of ingenuity. I don't know exactly how we're going to do this, but we need to get it done. And so we're going to pray, we're going to work, and we're going and, and to strive for that. Secondly, there are those great models out there in those great places. I know with Focus, we spend an enormous amount of time training and supporting our staff with the hopes that they'll do great work on the college campus. But more than that, that once they're off campus, they'll be fire starters at their parishes, in their families, in their communities mm -hmm. for the rest of their lives. But we can go out and find, find somebody and say, hey, you're, I see you're having some success in the pro-life movement. Can you at least tell me how you do it? Go visit people, yeah. find those experts, and they'll yeah. teach you so much. You know, I think it's, it can sound very basic, very simple, but I think the first step is really for each man to say, Lord, I'm ready to go all in. Sometimes I have this image of sitting at a poker table with poker chips, and Jesus is at one side, and I'm on the other, and he's saying, okay, what's your play? And I want to throw him a chip or two chips. He goes, no, no, no. Are you all in? And making that fundamental decision, Lord, I want to use all the resources you've given to me, my time, my talent, my treasure, to follow you, and then actually begin to pray. So, Lord, get me in the game. Lord, lead me, bring men into my life to help me see where I can really have an impact. And the Lord will hear that prayer. Yeah. I want to say something to the women, too. If your husband or the man in your life is stirring, get behind him 100% and support him because it's so important that we do this together, whether it's physically together, but for sure spiritually together, that we really are together in this and that he can really is free to go and do what God is calling him to do if, with your full support. And you're called to do, and we can support each other, and call, you're called to do what God's called you to do, and it's really a mutual commitment together. And we just both, we were talking in our, our show, just we feel like we're in an adventure and we're in this battle together. My wife's a warrior. 
Michael Ann is a warrior. They're not just watching us. We're fighting together. We have different areas of the battle we need to fight, and we're in this together all the time. And it, it really helps. It makes it makes marriage even more exciting, actually. You know, one of the things that he also mentioned is, you know, what do I do to prepare myself? One of the things I like from the past is we've kept going back to in Ephesians yeah. chapter 6 is that you take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to have that sense that you need to study Scripture and the teachings of the church. Yeah. And to have a sense that this is the one offensive weapon. Everything else right. is defensive right. and protective. But the offensive weapon is God's word, and that'll be in Scripture as well as in the teaching of the church. And so I think that that's another important way to help prepare for the spiritual war. That's an amazingly exciting point, Father. And, and in fact, Pope Benedict said something that is really spectacular about this. He said that if the Catholic faithful would commit themselves to the daily prayerful reading of sacred scripture, it would open up the new springtime of evangelization. Yep. That's the hinge. If we were just to go to our Lord, well, how do you do it? Just sit down and tell your Lord, our Lord, you don't know how to do it, but begin maybe in the gospels and to read just a, a short passage and prayerfully say, what do, you, what do you want me to learn from this Lord? What do you have for me? And just spend just a few minutes in prayer and let him speak to you. It's amazing how the things in that brief time of prayer will come up over and over again in our day. Yeah. And in fact, in every Catholic Bible, it was printed that there is an indulgence for reading scripture, whether alone or in a group. So there's a spiritual benefit of another yeah. level too to help your own soul and the souls of those in purgatory. Yeah. On, a, on a very basic level, the gentleman from New Jersey was asking the question, how do guys get in the game? How do we get activated? Part of it is an awakening of faith and faith comes through hearing. Yes. You know, what's heard is the word of God, being in touch with the word of God. Mm -hmm. And th it's, a, it's an offensive weapon because it gives us the truth. Every day the devil wants to beat us up. He's trying to say, you're no good. You're not going to be forgiven. You're never going to make it to heaven. You're a failure at this and that. And if you start reading the word of God, it starts cleansing your mind with truth. No, I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. I'm bound for glory. You know, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You start living in those truths and it just begins to lift you. It begins to give you confidence to be able to live each day in the Lord. So, Michael, and you, you look like you were going to say something. Well, I, I'm building on the same point. I think what, what, as a wife and a, and a mother, to support your husband when he wants to do something, is is a huge point. Encouraging him to spend time in the Word, but also be willing to sacrifice some time with him. Encourage him to go out and spend time with men. Encourage him to go out and and do what it is that God has put on his heart. And sometimes, if your house is anything like ours, it's busy, and having dad home is a luxury. And so, encouraging him to go out and and encourage other men sometimes is a great sacrifice. But being able to link that with prayer, prayer for those souls that he's going to work with, and being uh, making that a, a gift to to the church and God will bless your marriage. He will bless the unity you have and, and he will bless your family. So an encouragement. We have another call. We have Henry on the line. Hello, Henry. Yes, Father Mitch, how are you? Fine, where are you from? I'm from New York. Great, and what is your question? Well, Father, I just had a comment to your guests. Uh, <clears throat> I really wanna tell them how uh, great of a show they're putting together. And uh, there, are really, there aren't really too many shows like it oriented uh, toward men and for men. And I truly learn something every time I watch the show. In all honesty, every time I watch it, I learn something. And I, and I go to bed thinking about the show and what the guy said. And I really pray that uh, those guys Praise stay God. together. I also admire how they gel together on the show. And the chemistry that flows between them is really amazing. And you could, you could really tell that the Holy Spirit has a hand in what they're doing. And I pray that they stay together for a long, long time. Thank you, Henry. Henry, thanks Thank so much for so your much. encouragement. It's great to run with you, Henry, in the battle. Now, one of the things about this battle, and I want to address this to the two wives. You know, men, uh, as part of the tradition of men, go off to war or they go off for the hunt, and they're gone from the family a lot. Your husbands are off to the battles by giving these conferences, doing these TV series, uh, they're, they're off hunting down other men for the, to, to bring them to Christ. How do you deal with this when they're gone so much? Well, we all know the famous saying that behind every good man is a great woman. <laughs> 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 she said with the most... No argument the there. No argument there. <laughs> yeah. so, I think, you know, one of, one of the things is um, obviously being really connected in our relationship with the Lord. 
but we're fighting our own battles right at, at home, and those battles that we're fighting are equally important. I remember very early on in our marriage as I was nursing a child and Peter was off in Africa preaching the gospel, and I just felt so alone. And I remember the Lord just spoke to me in my heart and said, when Peter goes, I go with him, but I also stay here with you. You are never alone. And just that sense that God is with me, no matter where Peter goes or what he's doing, makes me really feel united with the work that mm -hmm. he's doing. And it's, it's wonderful to see the fruit that's happened. And as Michael Ann said, it is a sacrifice. It has been a sacrifice. So many wonderful um, stories, so many things that go wrong when Peter leaves town. The devil loves to step in there and um, make, you know, the kids get sick and they break their limbs and <laughs> things fall apart in the house. And you just know that the devil's really trying to, to step mm. in be between you and your husband and what the Lord is doing there. But um, you just fight every day and you um, welcome them home. And once in a while we go out and we watch our husbands do what they the Lord's calling to do and we say yes Lord he's all yours you can have him because you've gifted him and we really want him to serve in the way that he's been called to serve and I would just uh, accentuate that uh, being rooted in prayer that that God really is our sustenance knowing that we're on this mission together that um, when Curtis goes out I a part of me goes with him and um, I, I, I really do think God does bless us in the trials. We also d try and spend, when Curtis is home, we really try and spend one-on-one -on -one time with the children and we try and get out and really spend one-on-one -on -one time together so that we don't become too disconnected. Yeah, and, yeah, that's um, important. and just that vulnerability. I've, I've actually had to tell Curtis, I need you home right now, having four teenagers and right. college students and a, a three-year-old. There have been times where I've asked him, please, I need you to be home. I'm having a hard time. And, and he, he's able to, to help me. And, um, and with God's grace and, and just constantly being committed to a, a good prayer life, having a plan of life, an interior life, sustains us, really does. God's grace is there. You know, Father, I think one of the things that we've uh, recognized, mainly because some mentor couples helped us understand that, you know, the work we're being called to do, the Lord just asks us to do it. It's great that we can do it, but the first priority we have is our relationship and our children. It's the first vocation. It's our primary vocation. And that, I, I, you know, Debbie and I, when we talk, about, we talk about schedules and balance, if she tells me if I have opportunities to go somewhere in the world to serve the Lord, and she says to me, you know, Peter, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work for these reasons, and it's good reason, I stay, I'll just stay home. You know what I mean? I, I won't do it because we really need to make sure the home front is where the Lord wants it to be. Right. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's, we work together. We're a team doing mm -hmm. that whole thing. Yeah, you know? that, that's like the fort. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have uh, another call. We have Sharon on the line. Hello, Sharon. Hi, Father. Good evening, Father Mitch. Where are you from? I'm from New York. Great. And what's your question? Uh, yeah, it's a question, and I see time's ticking. So this might come down to, more importantly, a, a wonderful prayer from you and the fellows there this evening. It's for my brother. He is not on the sideline, has never been on the sideline. He's been a fullback for Christ. He's witnessed for Christ in every way, shape, or form in his life. And just like Peter had mentioned at the very start of this program, if you're alone and you turn the corner and the devil's there, people will call you a lunatic. If you're not with the group, you know, that's how the world will see you. So here's where it's at. My brother is now um, being shipped off to a psych hospital because of his conviction to bring Christ to others and to fight the devil. And that has been his mission. And so I know we're down to nubs of time here. So if all I can ask is that team you've got sitting up there, remember a guy who's single, who has dedicated his life to Christ, he wanted to be a priest. He went to Cathedral College here in New York. And um, it was back in the time when there was a lot of strange things going on in the um, Dunwoody, I guess that is. And he decided not to go on. And he was called in other things. But I guess I was hoping that if it wasn't the DVD, would you know of an organization, as you were saying earlier, um, that goes out on the road in New York that he comes out and it'll hopefully be in the next Do, week. do you guys uh, have anything going on in New York? 
Focus has a, a group at the NYU in uh, New York, and we're hoping to expand further, but we've got some missionaries on the ground in New York City. And that, that maybe you can uh, hook up with them, uh, because it sounds like he also needs you know, a, a community, because again, doing it on our own is not a, 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 a so good a thing. We need that help and that support, as you guys have emphasized so much. So hard to get picked off if you're in a group. When you're off on your own, they can call you crazy. When there's a group of you sitting back and holding each other accountable, trying to be, you know, what was the prudent thing to do? What was the aggressive thing to do? But we're sharpening one another. You can just uh, ball together. and We're going to commit to praying for him uh, and certainly that God's going to walk with him. Yeah. And you could just hear the pain in her heart for her yeah, brother. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. she can just take consolation in the fact that no matter where he ends up, the Lord said, I'm with you always. I was thinking of John of the Cross. You know, remember John of the Cross got thrown in the cave? and uh, You know what I mean? The, the right, dark nights you in, go through, yeah. They put him in monastic But jail. the Lord's right there. There's no place you can go that the Lord is. And nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. He's not alone, and the Lord will be near him and love him. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid we've run out of time. Uh, thank you so much, ladies. Thank you so much thank for joining you, us. Thank you. And you gentlemen. And, and thank you, Father. Danny, and it's good to have all of you guys with us. Um, let me give you a blessing, and I want especially to have it go out to that young man and all the other men out there. And Almighty God bless you and strengthen you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, we can bring you this show, and we can bring you Crossing the Goal Line and all the other programs, because this network is brought to you by you. We can't do it without you any more than any of us can do anything for Christ without each other. So please... Keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, and your cable bill because we've got a lot of bills that we've got to pay and we need your support. God bless you and thank you so much.